wake up. All right, blank canvas, new game time. It's intimidating, almost like an empty essay paper before you start writing. I don't often finish out games. I like to build little concepts and demos, but rarely do I stick to an idea until it's done. Where do we start? Scope and planning. Defining the scope of a game helps us decide our objectives so we don't lose our minds to scope creep which is when you keep trying to add new features and ideas to the point where it starts to negatively impact the project or even make it impossible to finish. So we actually start building up the game by limiting it and shaping it. What's our genre? Action adventure RPG. Inspirations, resources, well, all of the Legend of Zelda games. And what gameplay elements do we want? Combat, exploration, and puzzles. There are a few major limiting factors about building a game in Game Builder Garage, and one of them is the nodon limit. This simple scene with a corner of a world with trees and grass is a nodon count of 84, and we haven't even added anything to our player character yet that's going to present some challenges. So for now, the plan is to divide the experience between four games connected by swap nodons. An intro area, an overworld where there's quests, a temple where there's heavy focus on puzzles and combat, and then finally, if we need to make a separate game for the final boss and finale, we'll do that too. On to story and themes. Zelda stories usually deal in some very ancient forces going through the current version of their eternally recurring struggles. I really like the idea of making the story about Bob and Alice. They're basically the only fully sentient non-Nodon creatures, and they seem to me like some primordial force of balance, keeping the Game Builder Garage universe in order. It also lends our heroes a personal connection to the plot, which most Zelda games have. The great evil this time around? I was thinking the endgame nodon. Just like Ganon is a constant force of evil, the endgame nodon is a constant force of, well, ending. And the idea, right now at least, is that she is harnessing Alice's boundless energy to end all of the games in the Game Builder Garage universe. Now let's get started on our Bob companion. Just like any good Zelda game, we need a slightly annoying follower that will be along with us on our journey and tell us what to do sometimes. We start with the basic person Nodon as our player character, and I've just slowed him down a little bit and made his jump slightly less high. We then add a small sphere that is blue and non-solid with a connection of center Y positive, a bouncy material, and a size of 0.10 all around. Now the method for having Bob follow the player is actually going to be a string connector. I originally thought we'd have to do something a little bit more complex, but this worked out better than I imagined. We'll set the string stiffness to 0.45, string length to 1, and have it be invisible and non-solid. And this actually looks pretty natural. Once you spin around once and bring Bob down, he'll float around like a fairy or a sprite. Next, we'll get to work on the particles that he leaves behind and a trail of where he moves. We're going to use a launch object nodon set to a box with the size of 0.3 by 0.3 by 0.3. Launch direction of x negative and a launch speed that's very, very low, but still has some movement, so 0.02. Launch interval can be set to anything. In this case, I did 0.5. Zero gravity material, non-solid, invisible, non-destructive, and a connection point of center center. Since the launch object is invisible, we'll use a sprite for the particles. We want the sprite to be the same size as the box, 0.3, 0.3, and we'll use a combination of smaller dots and slightly larger dots. Texture phase of Y center and Z center will work. I'm going to have two alternating textures so it doesn't look stale when Bob is just floating around. So it's working now, but it's only demonstrating the first texture. We're gonna add a simple piece of logic to alternate between the two textures. A constant node on through a timer into a looping counter. The positive signal will be one texture and the not signal will be the other texture. 
I'm moving through this a little quickly because I'm also including a download code. So if you miss anything or you need to refer back, you can download the demo of this episode and see the things that we made in this video. An interesting little side benefit of using the string to attach Bob to the player is that we can use an attract object node on set to sphere and box or just sphere to cause Bob to point towards things or if we use box as well to throw his particles at them to get your attention which could be useful down the road for gameplay or puzzle solving. Our final objective for today's episode will be the Destroy Sword. Forged by the original Destroy Object Nodon, this sword has great power and will be tremendously useful on our quest. I wanted sword combat to kind of function how it does in the original Legend of Zelda. The sword will appear in front of you for some time and it'll prevent you from spamming the attack and force the player to make some combat decisions. We're back in the programming screen and I've designed two sheaths, one with the sword in it, one with it not inside, and the sword attacking separately. We'll start by adding the sheath to the back of the player. We'll create a box with the dimensions of x.4, y.8, and z.10. We'll make it invisible and non-solid with a springy connection type and the connection point center z positive. That's going to keep it on the player's back and prevent it from affecting his movement too much. We'll attach both textures and make sure that their sizes somewhat correspond to the box. In this case, I made it a little bit wider because I wanted the drawing to look wider on the character. And with a texture face of Z negative. Now we've got the sheath on our back. The next step is going to be to create a state for when we are attacking. I'm going to use a flag to hold that state and the Y button will be our sword attack button. We'll set it to on press and have it turn the flag on. I want you to be stuck in an attack state for a very short period of time, a little bit less than half a second. So when the flag is on, it'll cause this counter to count up, has a range of zero to 25. When it is 25, it'll turn the flag off. So we know that your attack is done. And this way, the flag will represent when the attack is taking place. We don't need it quite yet, but I have this wormhole node on to make it easier to bring this signal to other places in the game later on. When we are attacking, we want the empty sheath, and when we're not, we want the complete sheath and sword. Now, we can see that that's working. Effects and sound make a big difference when playing a game. We want to layer a few sounds on when we attack with the sword a ha, a whoosh, and a slice that has been pitched down, I think work quite well. So we're gonna set that up down here before we finally make the actual sword. Now, I can already see myself optimizing this using a teleport node on, but I wanted to try and prevent using teleports right now because I feel like I'm going to use up all the channels in the level. So for now, the sword is a fancy object that we attach to the front of the player. I'm using an arrow here, with the size 0 0.15, 0 0.90, 1.2. Have it set to a zero gravity or a floating material, a springy connection, and a connection type of Z positive, Z negative. We can connect the sword texture to the sword object and then work out the texture face and rotation so that it looks right, which usually takes some time for me. There we go. Once we have that all set up, we'll connect the flag to the action, so it looks like the player is either punching or attacking, thrusting forward with the sword. All of this is subject to change in the future, and I'll probably make lots of optimizations as I run out of node on count in the level. Finally, I don't want you to be able to move when you're making an attack. This way, you have to really decide when to go for it. So I'll add a quick multiply that will only allow you to move when you're not attacking. In the end, it can look something a bit like this. And that's it for the first episode. I'll have the game ID on the screen right now and in the description.